Let me make sure we're. Technology is a crazy thing, man. It's always wise to do it. It's grand. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for waiting. Sorry, are we late? That's yeah, my sorry fault. We're late. No. Playing the Damathic guy. Issues. We are going to get started here momentarily. Not issues, just picking people up and dropping them off. I, I got hear, audio. I hear we're the good. audio. We're, we're good. good. Uh, I don't have Tim on. All right. We're just talking about Tim it. right here. We're good with this, right? Oh, <clears> yeah, yeah. <throat> here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us on yet another Tuesday night edition of the WCAC Spectacular. The man I'm staring up right through, Tim Strachan. Yeah, you give me like oh, a it's death like stare. Right it's kind of ominous. Nah, man, you know what? I- I'm excited tonight because I had a week off with my boys from the math. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to, you know, talk a little bit more about them and the week that's coming up. But also looking forward to hearing you guys recap this uh, week that was. He's Kevin Ricca. The week didn't disappoint, man. You know, I think the uh, good Council Gonzaga was the game of the week this week, and we're going to get all over that. But uh, uh, it's always fun joining you guys down here in the basement talking about the league, boys. Matt, the real deal seal. Gentlemen, it's always nice to be back in the basement with everybody here. Uh, we hey, will... welcome back from Johnson City, my friend. Appreciate it. Had a welcome great time visiting family down in Tennessee. And you so. were here last week. We just had two guests. Correct. We had two fantastic guests who brought it. So thanks to uh, Coach Kaz and Pat Ward from St. John's for joining us last week. Same camera. Same camera fits us. They got Pat and Coach Kaz. Those two Kaz giants of the game. R- around the table. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's plenty Same of room. Table. That's right. I'm Ken Marangolo. On behalf of First Amendment Sports, welcome to our coverage of the greatest high school sports conference in the land. We've been saying it for a long time. I think people are waking up to that being a reality. I tease our... Uh, commitment to all sports uh, in the WCAC, um, and we will talk about them. And, and uh, uh, we are getting uh, final uh, notifications probably by the middle of the month on uh, the championship schedule for the fall soccer, volleyball, I believe. We said field hockey, yep. uh, uh, football, clearly. Um, and we'll, we'll 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 cover it all here. We'll we'll, we'll give it an awesome shine. Uh, we'll be sure to uh, make you aware of the awesome stories in all of those sports. Um, we are committed at the moment to uh, what is one of the most incredible football leagues. Uh, if you like football, which we love football, it's, it's an amazing football league. Um, it's the WCAC. It's the upper division. My boys took the field uh, this week against his boys. Uh, it's our boys and our boys. Our guys. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I think everyone kind of had a feeling about how, how it would go from a standpoint of what we've seen so far this season. Um, I I was proud of the fact that it, it wasn't as, as lopsided as some of the some of the games we saw and and uh, a couple guys at Bishop McNamara High School um, definitely played uh, in a, in a manner that is um, befitting of the Mustang man you know I, I think and um, Quinn Osborne uh, the linebacker number thirty five he's a player man he's a he's tackle a, machine he's a hell of a player yeah. he he it's like uh, the screen skips when you watch his highlights oh, he's just outside the hole, and then all of a sudden, he's making the tackle. So it, it's uh, it's fun to watch a um, guy in your your jersey uh, do that kind of a thing. Um, and I think um, Miles Miller, the quarterback, uh, again, you know, is is showing uh, he's got a little moxie. Um, what forty two nothing the final? Yeah, yeah. Miles did a great job getting rid of the ball quickly and uh, and putting it right on the money. Uh, he's he's going to have a future playing in uh, college somewhere. Uh, on the McNamara sideline, we were missing some guys, most notably Kenny Womack. There was a lot of guys um, uh, in street clothes. So I think you know, just let, just just under a dozen. Um, Kenny Womack-Namara, as we like to call him, uh, is definitely uh, sorely missed. Um, but but the St. John's program uh, d- did what it does, um, and the uh, they didn't disappoint. You know, the guys who who are showing up this season showed up on on Saturday. Sold Jay Maivia to Raheem Jarrett connection. Is still just rolling, yeah. And it's special. In fact, I have I have they kept it rolling right here. But yeah, Sol J and uh, Rakim are uh, quite a dangerous combination. Keelan Robinson got things uh, going on the ground game. He uh, he had a twenty yard and an eighteen yard touchdown run, and he's a blur, man. 
You watch well, him. Nice on... to see he's back too. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's good to have up a little it's, bit. It's, it's good to have a guy like that back. Yeah. You know? Not bad. Uh, uh, he jumps out on tape. He he's a blur, man. And uh, the best part about him. Uh, a tough nut and, and a team guy. His block on the, on the kickoff returns last week, I failed to mention, but he ran the length of the field, got in front of someone, made the last block, made another block, and then ran off and celebrated in the end zone as if it was him that scored. <laughs> and uh, you got to love that stuff. Yeah. I do. And uh, I love that kid. He's tough as nails. And we're certainly happy to have him back. Yeah. Well, uh, Soljay obviously had a, had a solid performance. Um, I, I was definitely – Rakim definitely impresses – uh, but who's the guy who we always talk about uh, on this show, whose name always just kinds of makes it, just kind of makes it out, in, you know, into the the basement sphere or well, whatever, whatever it is. I would say Ron Cook. It's almost Ron Cook. It is Ron it's Cook. It's Ron Cook because yeah, we just Ron. said it again. But on the other side of the ball, the the, the, the defensive version of Ron Cook is uh, our guy Isaiah Jordan. Isaiah Jordan, and, man. Uh, Every week we say his name. Coach talked about him last week and said he's never lost a game that Isaiah Jordan has started, and. Uh, the week after that is said down here in the basement, what does he go out and do? He's uh, sack, scoop, score, TD yep. on the defensive side mm. to show that uh, no one was messing around. The kid can play, tackling machine. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to throw a little shout out out there when they got the young guys in there in the second half. Freshman Drew Amave hit sophomore Caleb Coombs in a thir- on a third quarter touchdown. And I remember the thrill it was for me the first time someone talked about a touchdown. <laughs> and uh, I just I wanted to do that for the young QB because that's a that's a big, big deal. And yeah, let's uh, not forget your dad had a TV show back in the day, yeah. fifty yard line. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You asked, was that the theme music? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get it. Oh, yeah. hey, everywhere gotta I went, we have, everywhere, we, we I hated when I was little. Everywhere <laughs> I went, everyone was like, hey, coach, can you put me on the 50 yard line? I'm like, how do you know these people? And stop introducing me to everyone. I'm a shy kid. <laughs> I guess he busted me out of that, but the it was shyest. a great show, and I loved it. I loved, being a, I loved that my dad <laughs> did it best. every Sunday at 5 o'clock, I believe. Maybe 8 o'clock. Maybe it was 8 o'clock. Because I remember it was a bedtime situation. But yeah, he covered high school football, and it was a, it was a video. It was a, th- it was a half an hour show. And uh, it might have been an hour show. I think it might have been an hour. Uh, they didn't cover just the league. They covered all the oh, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the whole a lot, area. A lot of good people were involved in that production. It was uh, it was done on a Sunday. We used to sit and, around yeah. those nights and see if maybe our team was covered and yeah. some, of, some of us yeah. would be on TV. If we were, and where we're wearing the top 25. Way and, to go, and the whole young nine. man. That was yeah. great. Yeah. At a boy freshman. Now, there was a big, big time, big time game. To start Where, conference play, no less. Wow. I hope, I hope your dad had a guy like this on. Right. My, my dad's got a guy like this with him for quite a while. <laughs> they're, they're, they're attached at the hip. Two peas in a pod. Don't you dare go to voicemail, Tim. Don't you do it. There's a, there's he's gearing up. I know he's, he's gearing up. Tim Reddy, school counselor at Langley High School. Oh, oh. oh. Tagger. Oh. Tim Reddy. How? How does that happen? Where you at, buddy? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he's scared to talk. Uh, Uh-oh. Man. No. no, he's not scared to talk not after at all. what happened out no, there. Not at all. <laughs> no. Let's <laughs> try him one more time. <laughs> Jamie has him doing chores yeah. or something. He's doing dishes right now. Or, Listen, yeah, dishes. give him the business on this one. <laughs> if, if we don't call by a certain time, Mrs. Reddy's working him over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah well. got plenty of other good counsel. That's right. Guys, call Shout out, Mrs. Reddy. Call Even in the year of 1994, wanting to do this, they're like, why Tim Reddy? Where's this guy? Yes. Tim Reddy. Hello. Just another good council victory. <laughs> what a great game on Saturday. I hope you're playing. He was guitar. warming up his, his dulcet tones. <laughs> not, uh, listen, good grief. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You, you better answer your phone the first time yeah, next time you're coming yeah. out of Margaritaville, though. Oh, we did, I think we called his work work line instead of his cell phone. <laughs> I think you were taking out the trash or doing dishes or something. I've been here the whole time looking over my notes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think uh, you probably all right. Here so practicing your song. So a huge a huge day. Um, take us through it. Uh, what happened? Huge day. Well, just just to throw the score out there. And, and we're talking about good counsel. And this indeed and was one of the biggest wins. Uh, for good counsel in a long time, uh, you know, knocking off the number two team undefeated Gonzaga uh, down there in front of uh, a crazy environment, which it always is down there. And uh, it, it really was, you know, the tale of two backs for good counsel. And they started off with Latrell Palmer, and he's been the guy they've been using uh, for the past uh, five games because Savion Wilkerson had been out since game one, but Savion was available for this game. 
and uh, he ended up coming in and uh, finishing up with 262 yards and, and a couple huge plays uh, that we'll go through here. But just two hundred, just two hundred and sixty-two yards. Is that what you said? Two hundred and sixty-two yards. Good. Yeah, mm. Lord. Yeah, he was. Uh... He was dynamic. Hats off to Gonzaga. <laughs> you know, Gonzaga's uh, quarterback is legit. Uh, I know he's only a 10th grader out there, but Caleb I was Caleb uh, very impressed with his ability to deliver the ball. Hey, dude, uh, two, first qu- two first quarter monster strikes to John yeah. Marshall. First half, uh, you know, just from all over the field, they're coming at you. The 35-yard line, the 45-yard line, they're just getting and it in the air. Touchdown, the, the first touchdown he threw to him. I'm still not sure how he caught that. I mean, it was like a back shoulder void laser. Low to the ground. Snag him. <laughs> Snag and respond and pop up and take it to the house. Uh, that's another dangerous connection. There's a handful of them in this conference. Yep. And that's uh, and not to take anything away from uh, from number two, Sam Sweeney, who caught two in the second half. I mean, you know, this is they were certainly a big play offense. And, and man, Tim, it was fun watching. Uh, I know you've been talking about these big boys, but... Uh, I think they rushed for over 300 yards on Saturday, man. Yeah, they absolutely did. And, you know, and the council really has a couple different backs they're using. You know, Sean Allen, number 27, is a fullback. They actually took him out and brought in number 44, Damani uh, Dickerson. And that's actually my old number. But anyways, this guy's way bigger than me. He looks like a defensive end. Did they call you first before they took your number out? Yeah. For permission? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Athletic director, uh... Bad game there's a protocol uh, involved. Just making sure there's a protocol. Yeah, yeah. Protocol. yeah I gave him the okay. You're a good so, man for that. C- congratulations to you and your family. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyways, the, uh, the running game, the running game was was fantastic all day long, and uh, the council's O line absolutely uh, handled Gonzaga. Now Gonzaga made some big plays. I mean, they definitely you know had some big plays on D and some. An amazing interception. I don't know who it was and in the back corner uh, in front of the goal line. A one-handed diving backwards interception by one of Gonzaga's DBs. So, I mean, they made some awesome plays. But good counsel's defensive line absolutely dominated the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, with, you know, Kayla Williams' quick release, he was getting rid of the football. But the counsel was certain to put a lot of pressure on him. And, you know, Gonzaga's O-line is huge. These guys look huge in pads. But uh, good counsel's D line looks pretty damn good too, and uh, was certainly taking it to him. Yeah, Caleb uh, Caleb Williams made some superstar throws in that game. Uh, there was there was a, a couple ones that he wished he could have back. I know that uh, two pick sixes uh, for the for the Falcons in this on this day with twenty one. That was Justin Jackson. One in the first half, Kevin. Absolutely, uh, number nine for good counsel, Curtis Walker as a linebacker for Curtis. good counsel, and that that tied it up fourteen fourteen. Uh, in the third quarter. But there was a lot of points scored late in this game. It was 21-17 with 4.28 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, the final score was 38-31. Uh, I will say this again about uh, Caleb Williams. He threw a ball late. I think it was 60, 65 yards in the air deep. Uh, that set up their last points, which was a field goal. Uh, but yeah, John Marshall again on the, reception, on the receiving end of that. They, uh, they, 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 they got a good feel for each other, the senior and the sophomore do. No, they can really air it out, and I think we're going to obviously see some more big things. And he, and he could run with the ball, too. I mean, I, obviously, I was impressed with him. But the victor on the day, again, going to the Falcons. And, again, you got to give the game ball to Savion Wilkerson. He hasn't played since week one, and he is tough, and he is fast. He broke a 62-yard touchdown run late in the fourth quarter that ultimately sealed the game. And uh, that was pretty much it. I like that kind uh, of thing. Yeah, I, I'd say so. I'd say he would get the game ball, and I, I think he, along with the rest of his team, good counsel made a statement. One of the mm-hmm. two, whoever was going to win, made a statement uh, about who they are, what they can do. And, um, you know, I, I, I heard it was a great game in terms of, I think good counsel had to come back, right, from a deficit Plus, in the fourth absolutely. quarter. They yeah. were down most of the game. They were down. And, and, and they're not necessarily known as a, as a passing team, but they, they, they made it back. I mean, that's, that's a huge battle oh, they, right they, there. They did it on defense and on the ground, my friend. You, two of your players. favorite ways to do it as yes. a quarterback. But I mean, it was, Well, Justin was just, Jackson had those two interceptions. Yeah. He was the DB. They returned one for a touchdown. And obviously, that, ultimately, I mean, that, those were the game winners. The interceptions, you know, turned the tide for the, uh, for the Falcons. Absolutely. Turnovers always do. And, and Justin Jackson came off the bench, fellas. I mean, uh, Cam Hart Cam had some Hart cramps. Had yeah, he had some, a cramping situation. And... Uh, He's a super stud receiver, D-back, going both ways, heading to Notre Dame, and uh, ultimate weapon at good counsel. He goes down, your big guy goes down, and this guy steps up in a, in a game on that level. 
I'm on the road. You know, it's nice to have a guy like that sitting on the bench, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Come Absolutely. on, man. The council has a couple, and we know our next opponent, you know, uh, St. John's has uh, has many, has many to pick from. So we're, uh, we're absolutely looking forward to uh, this Friday night, and I know everybody else there is too. I, I thought I thought this was a bigger uh, game for good council to win. I thought it was a, a, a win the program needed more than Gonzaga. I, I, I appreciate what Coach Cass said last yeah. week on the show, which is, um, you're not last year's team, uh, you know, and, and, and every team does have to live its own, uh, you know, journey. Um, but I think good counsel needed this win. Uh, Gonzaga's played in some big time games. Getting to the championship last season um, was, was a big deal uh, for Gonzaga. I think they're very confident in their ability to get themselves in a situation where they're one win away uh, from that scenario again. I thought good counsel um, has played well enough to see themselves as that kind of team, you know, see themselves as capable of being there at the end, potentially against a St. John's team and fighting their way through uh, whoever it is. Uh, so I, I really like them winning as a fan of the conference. I like good counsel winning this game. Got a lot of people from Gonzaga that I, I love dearly. <laughs> uh, but I thought good counsel winning this game was, was the best outcome for the conference and for fans of the conference. Um, because it to me, Gonzaga has the same standing today that in my book they did last week. And really good counsel does too. Loss. But good counsel. It's only one loss. I mean, it, that's it, a huge win. Even that's though it's in, huge the, win. in the league, look. No offense to McNamara, I don't think they're going to make the playoff. I think it's going to be right. these four teams that are going to be in the in the playoff. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Absolutely. And, well, fact, and you can make the argument that it maybe maybe a loss is something that they needed at this point in the season. Have it at this point in the season, not at the end of the huge season. Huge win for, for the. You can for learn the a lot from this. For you know, they I, certainly Travis, have the Travis talent. Knows they certainly have the big play talent to win games. That's yeah. without question. Uh, the big ba- the big play talent is is super bizarre. Their last seven touchdowns, gentlemen, with their starters in the game, that goes back to the Carroll game and the Good Council game, are seven touchdown passes ranging from thirty five to fifty five yards. Yes. Those are their last yes. seven scores. You talk about big play capabilities and a, a fast strike, quick strike offense yep. through the air. Holy moly. You know, you don't see that often. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's I, fun I, to watch as, as long as you're not trying to defend it. Yeah, know, at this point. fair <laughs> enough. And, and, and if you're not trying to keep that defense from staying off the field and getting a little bit of a rest against those uh, big old brutes up front when it becomes a ball control game in the playoffs, which I believe is going to happen uh, very easily. Tim, hang with us for a second. We're going uh, yes. to talk uh, real fast about Dematic and Zaga. Uh, Matthew can say, do I feel have, free I have to chime right? in, my friend. Yeah, you don't feel free to, to chime in, and then and then we'll wrap up with a preview of the game where we, First Amendment Sports, will be present, uh, and that is at Catholic University this Friday night. Game time moved by ESPN from 8 to 7 p.m. Eastern. That's it. P20. Eastern. Eastern be there, time. Be square. Change your watches. Uh, we will be there, uh, but, but uh, another big game, a team with a break, a little rest. Yeah. Uh, binge watch a couple of seasons of something, I'm sure, in their off time. Um, getting ready to play some. They're binge watching football. Huddle WCAC. I yeah, hope so. I for their, for yeah, their I sake, I hope so. A little bit of what we used to call film. I know it's not film yeah. anymore, but they know what the hell that means. They can watch it on their on their phones. Yeah, they're, they're ready, right? Zaga, man, is a big week. Uh, Dematha's first test in the conference, having had a bye week last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's an interesting matchup. I think, you know, they get Gonzaga at the wrong time, coming off a, a loss. Definitely. In, in, definitely. This, in this conference, when you're coming off a loss, you, you want to wipe that bitterness out of your mouth, and, and, and whoever is going to be next up is, is going to be your victim. And, and for Gonzaga, no better way to be do it than against the Hey, man. It, it is a, <laughs> it, listen, it's a fight for survival. We know that, but yeah. there's no time wasted in this matchup. DeMatha, coming off a 2-3 and three league record last year, is not wanting to come out of the no. gates going 0-1. Gonzaga is 6 and 0, one of the top ranked teams locally and in the nation. They get they're getting love. All of a sudden, two straight losses puts them at uh, 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 the best they can do is 2 and 2, which would refuse to give them a a, a home playoff game. Playoff. Yeah, that's host. right. That's so right. all of a sudden it gets real serious yep. real fast here. Tied with McNamara, by I the way. I think the so matchup is the matchup's really interesting. Okay, we were just yeah. talking about how high powered Gonzaga is offensively. Demapa has Nick Cross and uh, DeMarco Helms, who are the number one, number two players in the state of Maryland, happen to be right next to each other in that defensive backfield. Yeah. If, if DeMatha can get some pressure and force, uh, you know, Gonzaga to be uncomfortable, and then on the flip side, the, the uh, 
the matchup being Ken, Nigerian, Johnson, and Helms also hook up in the passing game because they're going to need it in this. I know DeMatha wants to come out and establish the run and control the game, but they're going to have to go to the air and try and test this Gonzaga defense quite a bit, yep. maybe even early on, in order to then get into that rhythm of hopefully getting a lead and then using that running game. And to letting Marshawn and Lloyd keeping it out of Caleb loose. Williams' hands yes. and the guys that they can do things on Gonzaga's side. You're right. They're sitting there looking and saying, listen, we just saw – we just saw the good council rush for about 300 yards. The guy got 262. Marshawn Lloyd is a super stud back there. Uh, but in, in order to win this game, they're not going to be able to just hand it off every time. Nigerian does have to mm -hmm. make some plays, to. And with guys like Jermaine Johnson and DeMarco Helms, like you said, that's, that's the big deal. Gonzaga must protect the ball. I think that is the – obviously, it's very easy to say that for both teams. Both teams have sure. one loss. In those yep. losses, both teams have four-plus turnovers. Uh, this is not rocket science, and it, it, I'm not the one that's uncovering this. But you look at it, these two teams, 4-1 and one and 6-1, and one, two just stud teams about to go at it on a Friday night at the PG Sports and Learning Complex, I believe. Around the same time, kickoff happens for St. John's exactly Council. Same time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so uh, anyone over there, feel free to text us what's happening. When oh, we're we'll over, be checking uh, yeah, Twitter. Let's, we'll let's be figure checking it all out. Let's, text. Let's, I got to ask, I mean, I got to ask you, T, how 27 points ain't going to cut the cheese. They're going to have to at least get 27, but I think it's going to take more than that because yeah. of the way that this Gonzaga offense can strike at, at any moment, at any time. What I, what I think is going to happen is, you know, if the Matha can get up early and they can establish a lead, then they can rely on the running game, try to run the clock out a little bit, keep it out of Gonzaga's hands. But ultimately, it's going to be in the 30s, and I think it's actually going to end up being 34-27 stags at the end of the day. So T's got 34, 27 stags. What are you guys thinking over there? I, I got Gonzaga scoring more points than that. Uh, so I'm I'm giving Gonzaga uh, 40 points, and I'm giving uh, DeMatha 31. Hmm. 40 to 31. I'm I got uh, Gonzaga 35, DeMatha 21. Come on, man. With my th I got my 34, 20, Gonzaga. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just Gonzaga across 30, the thirty-six twenty-two Gonzaga. Oh, How we about just got that? Prices righted. Right out, right out one dollar. Yeah. One dollar. Somebody's either going to have a really $1. good week next week or a really bad one, and I'm pointing to myself on that one. There you go. <laughs> All right, so uh, God, it's going to be a great game. I wish we could watch both of those games. Uh, we will. We're going to figure it out, guys. We're going to figure it out. T thirteen tracking <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Anybody who hey, at yes. the game wants to tweet me. Let me know what's going on. Where are they love playing? It. Hey, they're at they're at Tamatha. Get yeah. Let, let me know if I'm wrong, he but I believe that's correct. I believe last year it was 26 to nothing Eagles in this exact regular season matchup, and Tamatha came back with like bats out of hell in the second half, cut it to 26 20, and had the ball somewhere near midfield yep. and threw a hail mary to end the game. So you know that if that's any indication of what's about to happen on Friday, it's uh it's coming. Meanwhile. At the Hall of Justice, we, at, over at Catholic <laughs> University, we will be doing uh, CUA, baby. CUA will be uh, uh, we'll we'll figure out what the, what the right way for why uh, is us it at to, Catholic? I'm just here. They just moved curious. the game. It was a St. John's home game. ESPN decided they they'd like to have the national high school game of yeah. the week televised for all the world to see, and uh, they had to move it to for various ESPN reasons, logistics that have, that have been un unexplained to me logistically, and. Uh, Hey, usually but, have you know what it is? It's usually having like a, a, a truck camera in the back, you know, on the sidelines. You need the you need yeah. The space I mean, light. Listen, yes. I, I played Lights, I, I played at yeah, both lighting. those fields. Those are my those are my two favorite fields on planet Earth. So I'm I'm happy to be at either, and sure, uh, sure. and I'm super sure. happy. <laughs> I love when the nation uh, when ESPN decides the nation should see a game like this, and uh, and yep. they're gonna be they're they're gonna be treated. They're gonna see how we do it around here. Well, I think it's the biggest game that's happened around here in a long time. Uh, ultimately, and uh, you know, two of the nationally ranked teams going toe to toe. I'm telling you right now, if anybody down there is going to be impressed, that they're going to see the football players walking around on that field on Friday night. Yeah, uh, big uh, boys. Speaking of big boys, uh, can, may I have had oh, it for geez. a second because I got super Are you excited. About to go, Raymond? I, 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 I'm yep. about to go. I'm about okay. to go. Definitely, right. definitely. definitely. Raymond down. There he goes. Listen, man. Uh, Good Council's O-line. Tim has been louding their praises since week one around here. Uh, the local media has jumped in on it. The Beef Brothers are calling themselves. And, and I'm sitting there thinking that, you know, I, I, we, what better way to do it? On ESPN, they're going to talk about the skill guys all night. We know that. We're going to hear about all the super studs and all the touchdowns. A low-scoring battle up front. The battle at the line of scrimmage, and I think Tim will agree with me, on ESPN this Friday night in Brooklyn is not for the faint of heart. There's, there's two offensive lines that just – 
just it doesn't make any sense that the level of athleticism these guys are it does not it does not make sense so i'm just going to give it up to him tim uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and knock out the uh the the, the st john's o-line here with damon arter drew bergeron elijah williams colin henrick and ryan Hagler. that they come in at weighing a whopping 1533 pounds i i i this is from the cumulative where's the cumulative beef? cumulative <laughs> Tim. Trust me, I've seen that picture when they're all in trouble. That's 1,500 yes. pounds. 1,533 on the St. John's end. And listen, there's been various measurements, so don't get out. I'm, 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 I'm saying they're equals here. I'm not trying to win the, the battle by five pounds 15 of what? beef. But the Beef Brothers over there versus the Ward 4 family that we got going on down in St. John's. Ward 4. The 15, 1,528 pounds. If you are an O-lineman on Friday night starting in this game, you average six foot four inches, 305 pounds. NFL. That's the average. That's that's. Hey, listen. So Tim, we can get into this, these D lines, these front sevens, having to handle these big old boys, and and the amount of yards they've put up, the amount of touchdowns they've scored. But when you look at that, and you're out in Iowa, and you're in California, and you're somewhere in Texas, thinking that you're the biggest of all, take a look at these big bad boys. I, and we got, I it's going to be the easiest game in the world to scout. All all he has to do is sit on his couch and watch ESPN. He's going to see these monsters run around and bang into each other with some awesome backs making some unbelievable plays. But I think. I think there's going to be some turnovers in this game on both sides, and I think it's going to be a back-and-forth matchup. Well, if there's over 1.5 tons of grade A WCAC certified starting O-line beef, I can't imagine. <laughs> yes. And, and where do you see how athletic these guys are? These, this, this is not a group of just biggins. Yeah. These are, they get so low. They're moving. Oh, I can't believe it. It's, uh, I never got that low. And they're, they're twice as big as me. Uh, sure they got low. Yeah, they're sure moving. got low. I just she did. got lower than that. Uh, <laughs> the the what, what I was going to say the defensive uh, lineman I mean I uh, all you talk about those people nationally who are watching thinking like their team you know because they, they they put their seven and zero in some high school conference out in the middle of some other state they don't have two teams like this they no certainly way. don't have three and they certainly don't have four and they and they they certainly don't have uh, have five I mean they certainly don't have they, they're not as deep hey man when you got uh... Uh, on St. John's side, Trey Williams and, and Tyze Johnson, who are two underclassmen, super stud D tackles, they're in for a night. Uh, get the ice bath ready. Get yeah. get 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 all the aspirin and everything else needed. Uh, Traymon Morris Brash, who I adore, a senior stud. He's coming off that edge. He had a huge game against Good Council last year. And uh, Greg Hudgens over there doing it right. That's th th those four guys up front. The, the, number forty-three from St. John's. Keep an eye on Tim Swope. I think this is his night. I think this is his night, Mr. Steele. You've James watched him play. Swope. You've been right there on the sidelines. Uh, another under underrated, unheralded stud senior at St. John's. And in the run game, he's going to be a factor. We well, good counsel's a line is going to be up against the two. Because, I mean, we certainly know how good that, that St. John's defensive line is. And those defensive tackles that you mentioned are two, a couple of the best players in the country. So yeah. <laughs> it's going to be quite a matchup. But good counsel, you know, they're 300 across the board. Uh, with guys getting offers from all over the place, and those those continue to pile up uh, as this season goes on, and it's certainly uh, going to happen after Friday night. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more offers popped on Friday night. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Will keep, they will. They will keep it popping. Those, the the mailboxes staff. will be full no Friday, Saturday morning. And one thing, don't forget about this: when you watch this game from all over the country, and right here on your own couches in the metropolitan area, starting quarterback toughness is at a premium. These two young men are not afraid to run the ball. They both run like running backs. They, they, they're team leaders. They're studs. They are physically and mentally tough guys, and that makes me real excited. That's, that's playing down there at Kathy University. I'm going to be super proud to watch those two guys handle that position because of the way they do it, the way they lead, and their absolute toughness. Forget about how good they are at throwing the ball. Forget about how good they are leading. Wait till you see the hits these guys take. We're talking about the sides of these guys. Yeah, Wait till you see what yeah, these fine. guys get into. These are two guys that absolutely get it done. Yeah. These are linebackers. And, and, and D-backs playing quarterback when they get the ball in the open field. They, they, they turn into running backs, and they're not afraid to give a hit or take a hit, and I love it. I'm so well, Kevin, excited we, to watch this, man. Well, me too, and, you know, we definitely have seen a lot of touchdown passes down there on Catholic's football field over the years, and uh, Friday's going to be no different. Uh, so I'm certainly excited to see that matchup. I, I do want to see Cam Snell, uh, good counsel's QB, step up and have a big night and be that leader that you're talking about uh, that can take them to the victory. Hey, uh, are we giving Tim? Well, yeah. I, I, before we let you go, give us your, give us your prediction. So I'm going to go with St. John's 24, 
the council twenty five. Uh, and and uh, that would be a great that would be a great outcome. I think there's going to be some turnover. Who does the score backwards? Who says the score backwards? Yeah, I yell at my all, kids yeah. about this. I'm still sitting. Can't I'm, do the score backwards. Who does that? Who that's does a good. It that's was a good dramatic. setup, man. Right there. That's actually dramatic. Telling yep, it was dramatic. dramatic. I know. It was one more, and the bottom line is, you can't give 110. percent You can only give 100. percent and you only need to score one more point than the other team to win, and that all that's all that matters. All so, right. I just feel what, a little bit of uh, maybe uncomfortableness in that prediction yeah. right there. I think he just took the Shaky. easy way out and went prices well, right rules on that maybe. one. Maybe. Definitely it's a tough pick. I mean, yeah. you're going up against, in my opinion, St. John's is the best team in the country. So, and they played the toughest schedule. <laughs> so, you know, good counsel is good, but they haven't played that schedule. Well, we... So, it's going to be a tough game, but... We, and we, we will miss you. <laughs> we will miss your presence there, my friend. Um, and we look forward to, to seeing you soon, but... Definitely having you on to talk about this game uh, next week, my uh, my friend. And on, on behalf of the group of us, appreciate your time on this fine Tuesday evening. My pleasure. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Falcons fly. Purple Eagles die. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh. And good Castle's been over and out. Ooh. Good Castle has been ribbing Gonzaga all week long. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they realize that what happens at the end of this season can Castle come by to bite you in your, in your purple or falcon. I'll just, I'm who, surprised he can rhyme. Final score. Yeah. Final Pretty score, good. Matt Seal. 21 to 17 will be your final score. Wow, everybody's wow. going really low. I mean, here's the thing. If it's a low-scoring game, I think good counsel wins. However, I don't think it's going to be a low-scoring game. What do you game. got? I see St. John's going out on top, yeah, getting control of this game, and good counsel wanting to run the ball. That's their bread and butter. They, they, they need that running game, but forced to pass, I think it's going to get a, a little bit out of their hands. Uh, they're not going to be able to cap- be capable of, of, of keeping it in. I think it's going to be St. John's 35 and uh, good count 21. I got uh, St. John's 41, uh, good counsel 24. And uh, listen, my boys, uh, obviously, there is some bias in the prediction, not in the coverage. Uh, St. John's has won in shootout fashion, 59-49 against a top team in the the nation. They've won in grinding fashion, coming from behind against Marietta, another top team in the nation that both teams beat this year. Uh, Five overtime wins. They've run with the run. They've won with the pass. Uh, I just, I I can't see them not coming out and getting something done. I got St. John's with 38 points and good counsel 20, and I think the difference will be on special teams. There's a cat wearing number 20 named Mordecai McDaniel. He has blocked two punts for touchdowns Fast. and taken one kickoff back 95 yards. I think you keep an eye on him in the special teams game, and uh, I think the cadets come on top 38-20. to 20. We will be uh, hanging out uh, Catholic before the game. Uh, we hope to put something out, some form of, of our show out uh, prior to the, to the game, um, ideally on the field uh, ahead of time. Uh, we, we'll work out the details, but if you're going to the game on Friday to Catholic, look us up. Uh, you know who we are. Look for this sign right here. You First know how to get sports. us. Uh, we'll be hanging out beforehand, and we'll have a, certainly have uh, a lot to celebrate, as there always is uh, when, when you get to the joy of getting to watch WCSC in action. Until next Tuesday evening, he's Pete Schwetti, a.k.a. Matt Seal. Looking forward to a great second week of WCAC conference football here, boys. See you Friday. He's Tim Strachan. Well, I may be over a Catholic in person, but my spirit's going to be over there in Lando. Oh, yeah. My, my stag's taking on the Eagles. Looking I forward to you. it. Go stags. Is, the stag is Kevin your, Ricca? The stag is your spirit animal, you would say, in spirit, in that fact. Oh, sure. Because I'm fired up about the Fantastic Four finally getting to collide yep. in football season on a Friday night here in the, in, in the, the metropolitan area, in the nation's capital and right outside. Uh, man, here we go. Friday night. Get your cell phones charged up and ready to talk a little trash and figure out what the score is at halftime. And find out what we're doing post game. Hey, hit us up. Your wife is letting you go, so we got oh, yeah. a chance here. She might be with me along with my kids. There you go. Until next week, I can't, I can't be Kenny McNamara without rooting for DeMatha to put a team below McNamara in the rankings at the end of this week. <laughs> for the WCC rankings. There I mean, go. we will. PG County supports each other, Come right? On. There you go. Let's go, Hyattsville. Till next Tuesday, on behalf of First Amendment Sports, I'm Ken Marangolo, and this was WCAC Spectacular. Thank you, Matt Seal. You, you picked Gonzaga to win. I, I don't get it. I know. I, I'm saying I'm rooting. <laughs> my rooting interest. But I got I to gotta give you the straight what I think about what's going to happen in the game. Heart versus mind. Is that what they Hey, we don't, come, we don't come here to not, <laughs> not, yeah. not preach. Yeah. 
You got us there, Matty? Uh, we are so torn by the cover 